Wool Gathering Collective. Today is September 17th and I'm coming to you from my living room in New Brunswick. My name is Meredith for those of you who are maybe new or have forgotten my name since it's been so long since I podcasted. Uh, on Ravelry and Instagram my name is Mero Shop. M-E-R-E-O-S-H-O-P, and on YouTube and Ravelry, I can be found at Wool Gathering Collective. So again, thank you for being here. Today I'm drinking Trader Joe's Harvest Blend Herbal Tea. It's got a little fox on the front. And it says, a fox enjoying a cup of tea? Of course, it happens all the time. If, that is, you're drinking Trader Joe's Harvest Herbal Tea, a blend of cinnamon, ginger, hibiscus, chamomile, roasted chicory, orange peel, and apple flavor. Your unbridled joy with each sip will make you feel like a fox in the hen house. Cute, hey? Anyway, it's pretty yummy, kind of spicy, and just delicious. And I'm drinking it in my San Miguel Azores mug, because that's where I bought it, so that's what it's called. And it's yummy. All right, I wanted to show you my pin. See, it says, not sorry. I'll explain why. <laughs> it's been over a month since I recorded. The last podcast was on August 6th, and I'm not going to apologize for taking uh, that time off from podcasting. Um, Conrad my Great Dane, passed away on August 16th, so 10 days after the last episode. And so, of course, that was just devastating. Um, and after he passed away, it was definitely a period of reflection and just sitting with myself and being, you know, quiet and thinking about his life and how much I cared for him. So... Yeah, that, that happened uh, over a month ago. Well, it was a month ago yesterday. And uh, so there was that. And uh, I also started something called the Whole30 on September 5th. And that has taken a lot of my time. Mostly just I'm in the kitchen all the time. So not as much time for knitting and whatnot. Um, there's also been someone in my family had some health issues. So... It's just been, like, it's gone fast, but it's gone slow at the same time. So uh, thank you for sticking with me. And I think it, I think Dr. Seuss says those that don't mind matter and those who matter don't mind. I think that's how, how he says it. So if you're still here and watching. I really appreciate it. And you know, if you were kind of annoyed, it took me so long. I hope you'll understand my reasons because you know, they're legitimate reasons for sure. Today's segments are going to include finished projects, on the needles, out and about, curating a life, and woolies, of course. So again, thanks for joining me. Grab a cup of something and let's get started. My finished project this week is something I can't show you. And that is a shawl and it's right here. And I suppose you've seen some, I'll just kind of slide it over a bit. I mean, you can't really see it here. Uh, it's a shawl, and the pattern is written by Shannon Cook, and she is the designer under the name Very Shannon. And it is knit in this Briggs and Little yarn. And this is the Fundy Fog colorway. I think it's Briggs and Little Regal is the one I chose for this. Anyhow, this uh, shawl is... Well, it was a test knit for Shannon, and it's going to be released under the Hinterland Straits 
collection. And the Hinterland Straits collection is uh, put out by Hinterland Textiles. And all of those patterns, if you are looking uh, on Instagram, if you do the hashtag Hinterland Straits, a lot of the patterns for the collection will come up. This particular pattern has not yet been previewed, so that's why I can't show you. Uh, but her whole collection is going to be released October 1st. So if you're curious, keep an eye on that. And it will come up. So yeah, uh, Hinterland Straits is the name. All right, so on the needles. Uh, there honestly hasn't been a lot of movement in that uh, regard. My talisman shawl I'm still working on. It's the first in the Secret Shawl Society. And I believe she's on the fourth release pattern now. So I'm a little bit behind. Uh, that's okay. I never aspired to be, you know, right up there with everybody else. So that's still uh, percolating, I guess, over there. And then I have my Viola socks, which I, I'm trying to think the last time I shared a picture of them. It was on a weekend. It must have been Canada Day because we went to see the changing of the guard in Fredericton. I would say it was Canada Day. I went through lovely socks, lovely yarn. Oh, matches my shirt. Oh my goodness. That's the yarn. Beautiful stuff. I haven't made any progress, clearly. There's a good reason for that. The third project that's on the needles is my Hansel Hap shawl. It's in my real Shetland wool bag. Speaking of which, are any of you going to Shetland Wool Week? If you are, oh, send me good vibes while you're there. I would love to be attend in attendance. But I'm not, so maybe another year. Okay, so this is kind of going to kind of be hard to show you because it's on a circular. It's on a circular needle. Here it is. So this big square gray blob is the center square of the hap. And then I've started, I have added my second color here. And I've started, so um, here's where the square ends and then you do your, see how the stitches are kind of twisted in here? That's where you start working in the round. Then I've started my first color. So Whitney had a shower in August and I went to it and this wasn't done clearly. Uh, so I just got her a little something else. And her next shower, I thought it was like maybe September 26th or whatnot, but that's her due date. The shower is October 2nd. So this is my main priority right now. And it has been, but that square was slow going. So let me just remind you what the other colors are going to be. The greens, bluey greens. She got so much. Well, when I say she, Whitney is my best friend. She's having a baby. This is going to be her baby blanket gift. But everything at that shower was blue. Blue, blue, blue. It was over the top blue. So I hope she's okay with getting some greens. And if not, she can, I don't know, deal with it. <laughs> so yes, this is the shawl. I'm really, I'm loving, or shawl. It, it could be a shawl, but it's a blanket. Um, I'm doing the full hap. It's by Goodwin Johnson, the pattern. And I'm using, I'll show you the label of the yarn. Jameson and Smith, and this is the two ply jumper weight. So, 
I, I think I mentioned this in the last episode, but I, I bought the Craftsy class and I've been following along there. And it's just nice to be able to see some of the techniques explained visually for you. I, it's been really interesting, actually. So keep an eye on Instagram if you want to see my progress. I have two weeks to finish and block it. So it has to be done. I mean, it has to be. It's just the way it is. And I wanted to say thank you to all the viewers who took the time to give me a comment uh, on the last episode about working off a cone. A lot of your, your advice was really great. And I did implement some of your suggestions. It made it easier to, to work with instead of always yanking on it. So yes, the Hansel shawl. Hansel Hap. Why do I keep calling it a shawl? The half hap is a shawl. You can fold the blanket in half to be a shawl, but this is the Hansel Hap blanket. Oh my goodness. Get it right. Okay. There we go. So that is all I have for on the needles. Out and about. <laughs> I always love saying that. Out and about. Well, summer has been lovely here this year. It's been very hot, very muggy. Uh, but we've enjoyed, we've gone over to the States quite a bit, to Holton. Uh, I actually think in July we were probably there every week. Just either picking up parcels or going up to see my parents. We, uh... My mom's birthday was August 13th, so we took the dog up, and we all went up, spent the day. We had Dairy Queen ice cream sandwiches, and just our, it was a fabulous day. It was really great. And so, yeah, we've been going, we've been going there. We One thing we didn't get to do, unfortunately, is in McAdam, there's a, a train station, a very old train station, and the town is in the process of restoring it and they have this thing called railway pie and it's there all summer I think until the end of September and I mean I've always kind of wanted to go there and have railway pie but there's a tv show I think it's on CTV or CBC it's called Still Standing and it's Essentially, there's this comedian named Johnny, and he's he uh, he's an actor as well. He's from Newfoundland, but he goes to small towns across Canada that have that persevering spirit. And he kind of he interviews the people, spends you know probably a week there, and you know talks about what makes the town special. And he did an episode in McAdam. And definitely talked about railway pie. So now it just, I don't know, it made it a very desirable thing to go try. But we haven't done it. So, um, and we probably won't, honestly, just because uh, next weekend, my friend Adele and I are going to the Common Ground Fair, which is in Unity, Maine. And it is... Well, it runs every year. It's been running for several years. Um, it's very much like a country fair in that there are 4-H kids showing their chickens. There's oxen pull demonstrations. I would like to take a class on how to carve your own wooden spoon. My friend Adele wants to take some spinning uh, seminars or lectures. There's a fleece show and sale. Uh, sheepdog demonstrations, um, you know, tomato judging. It's just a really fun place to go. And, you know, it's it's definitely, a, it has that Maine vibe to it, like state of Maine. Uh, there's lots of uh, really free-thinking people in Maine, 
uh, you know, who have some interesting ideas regarding politics. Uh, so there's, you know, people can give speeches, there's live music, there's vendors, Matter Root is going to be there. She does uh, like screen printing on bags and dishcloths and things like that. So she'll be there. Looking forward to seeing her. <sighs> Good food, lots of cool ideas in terms of like solar power, different alternative energies. So I think it's going to be... It's going to be fun. The first night, we're going to stay at an Airbnb in Winterport, Maine. And the second night, we're staying at this place also in Winterport. It's like an antique and antique shop and bed and breakfast. So I think that will be really fun. Adele and I haven't seen each other in a long time, which is unfortunate because she lives in Woodstock. So it's not that far away. But that's my out and about for this week. Uh, well, let me just say though, before I'm done, what I'm not going to is I'm not going to Rhinebeck. I'm not going to the Shetland Wool Week. So I'm kind of bummed about that. Um, but it just wasn't, wasn't in the cards this year. So next year, hopefully. In curating a life, I have a few things to talk to you about. The first is something that I neglected to mention on the last episode. So you saw the interview that I had with Sam from Trailhead Yarns. What I forgot to mention was that she kindly offered a giveaway for you guys. So uh, the first thing is her. I'm going to be giving away one of her vegan sampler packs. As a reminder, this is what it looks like. It has rose, banana, hemp, rami, sea silk, and linen fibers for you to try. Cool, huh? And along with that, for one lucky winner, I'm going to include one of her bags as well. And if you're the winner, you can pick greeny blue or pinky purple. Okay. Uh, so I'll set up a thread in Ravelry. It'll probably be something along the lines of what's the most interesting fiber you've ever knit or spin with, spun with. So that's that. Now I would ask that you only enter if you're a person who would actually spin the fiber. Uh, I think that's only fair, you know. So that's that. I wanted to make sure to get that right out of the way because I felt really bad for forgetting about it last time. Uh, I am part of the Mandarines group on Ravelry. And back in the summer, well, I mean, it's still summer, but actually back in the spring, she did a swap. Uh, it's called It was called a local swap. And I know I've mentioned my swap partner before, Victoria, but I wanted to show you what she sent me. So here's the bag, and this bag was, I have the paper here from her, not in there, here we go. She explained, she did a really nice, like, printed letter for me, so the bag, so the woman is from New York City. She was Swedish, but now she lives in New York, and it's called a bag all. This one has yarn on it, obviously. She had a dream about something other than her life in Sweden, so her husband and their three kids moved to New York City. And she first started making these as a reaction to all of the, the paper bags and plastic that she saw being thrown away in the U.S., you know, because it's more prevalent there and all the waste that was going on. So she sewed up some bags. You can reuse them. They're ecological. And the company was a success. Clearly, I can see why. So they, you can cinch it and carry it. So you could put library books in here. You could put a small number of groceries, some produce. 
You could carry your lunch to work in it. You could just carry it around in your car next time you go to, you know, the Gap and buy something. You know, have them put it in a bag like this instead of one of their bags. So, very clever. And it's called a bag all. I think I said that, but. www.bag-all.com and she's on Instagram at bag underscore all. So there's that. She sent me some tea. The candy's gone. Let's be realistic here. She sent me some needles, the zings, which I have never used, so I'm excited about that. She sent me a cookbook. Uh, the sweetest ki Swedish kitchen and from Fika to Cozy Friday and Fika is like coffee break is what we would call it here right I'm quite excited especially some of these soups to try they just look really good this one looks good fish soup with shrimp mussels and creamed horseradish that sounds delicious so yeah, I think the fika is probably the most interesting part of the book to me, just because they talk about, where is it here? So it's more, so it's more than a mere coffee break. It's one of the first words you will learn when visiting Sweden, right after tak, which is thank you. and or hij, which is hello. Fika is much more than having a coffee. It's a social phenomenon, a legitimate reason to set aside a moment for coffee, for quality time. Fika can happen at any time, morning as well as evening. It can be savored at home, at work, or in a cafe. It can be with colleagues, family, friends, or someone you're trying to get to know. It's a tradition observed frequently, preferably several times a day. Accompanying sweets are crucial. Cinnamon buns, cakes, cookies, and even open-faced sandwiches pass as acceptable fika fare. It comes as no surprise that Swedes are among the top consumers of coffee and sweets in the world, or that Swedes appreciate the good things in life. I love it. So yes, the sweetest kitchen. Here are the teas, they're clipper teas which are awesome. I have some. Haven't tried them yet, Victoria. I'm sorry. I'll have to get on that. And now the yarn. Beautiful blues. All right. The yarn is from a company that, well, the word, Olan's all centrum. It translates to the wool center of Oland. And Oland is an island east of Sweden. And so what they do is they collect wool from farmers around their region. And this type of wool that they collect would typically just be tossed away or burned even. Uh, because probably I'm assuming it'd be from meat sheep. Yeah, so they collect that and now they turn it into beautiful yarn. Their website, I'll spell it for you, actually. Yeah, so it's www.ullcentrum.com. Gorgeous. Can you imagine just tossing it, burning it? I've heard of some people actually... Um, some companies using wool for insulation in homes and whatnot, which makes perfect sense because it's warm and it has, you know, waterproof properties and whatnot like that. So anyhow, thank you, Victoria. I had sent you a, a note already, uh, but I wanted to publicly acknowledge your gift and say thank you. Let me check that off. My list. Where's my pen? I got a new pen and it's quite lovely. It's a, a Lamy pen. 
and it matches my new planner. The planner is by Rifle Paper Co. We can kind of, there we go. And I just decided that I wanted something, well, I wanted something physical that I could sit on my desk at work, but something that I could start using now and not have to wait till January. And I have a black Lamy pen, but I wanted one that matched my planner. So I got one yesterday at a store downtown Fredericton. So yeah, it's fun. I've already started filling it up. Do you guys, how do you keep track of things? Like for a while there, I was trying to do everything digitally to, to eliminate clutter and, and paper around my house. But I think there is something to be said for writing and, and having that out. So yeah, what do you guys use for appointments and things to remember, to remember birthdays? Do you have a calendar? A digital calendar? Do you have a bullet journal? A planner? What do you do? I'd love to hear about it. I, you may have noticed, I have this cool little bracelet. Well, I have two cool bracelets. I've already talked about the other one. This, oh gosh, this is going to be hard. The brown one, can you see it? It's got... It's like a ruler. It's a leather bracelet. I bought it from Espace Tricot in Montreal, but here's the company. It's a wrist ruler. It's leather. It's cool, huh? It comes in different sizes, 15, 16, maybe 18, not sure. Uh, and this is the dark color. So I got one for me and one for a friend. And then if you're ever like, oh, I need a ruler. How long is this? You have it on your wrist. I heard of some people getting a little like tattoo right here with a little ruler so that it can measure things, but that's not really me, so yeah. I Love Handles Wrist Ruler, Portland, Oregon, and their website is ilovehandles.com. Very cool. The last thing in curating a life is some yarn that I purchased in the summer, actually. And it took me quite a while to get over to Holton to pick it up. So it's Tuscan Knits, and it's hand-dyed yarn. Isn't it pretty? This is the Copperfield color. This is the Luna color, colorway. And this is O Pioneers. And together, they're going to be something really pretty. I don't think a shawl maybe this color is pretty I like this oh I like them all we'll see what do you guys think what would you make with these would you do something all together would you do socks stripey socks would you try your hand at color work would you do a color field not a color field but like a colorful shawl there's not enough for a sweater. Well, maybe a small one, so it wouldn't fit me. But, yeah. Anyway, it's lovely. It's soft. It's two-ply fingering, 100 grams, 400 meters, and it's 100% superwash merino. Tuscan Knits. I know she's on Instagram as Tuscan Knits. So, look her up. Well, that's everything for curating the life. I will see you in the Woolies section. Okay, Woolies, hey, what's up? Uh, I had, in my last episode, I had a thread started, or I announced the thread for the Colorfield Shawl giveaway, and that's by Kemper Ray who designs under the name Raybot. And earlier this afternoon, I added um, on Instagram, I did a story and I picked one of the winners. Here's the names of the 50 folks that entered the Colorfield Shawl giveaway on my Ravelry group. Alrighty, all the names are in my Ambitalia bag and they're gonna get shaken up. 
Here we go, picking a winner. The winner is Vanessa Kahn. Was for the free pattern, Vanessa Kind. But I'm gonna pick another one live on the episode. Well, live to me. You'll see it when you see it. So I've got all the 50 names, 50 people entered. Can you see them? They're all in here. They're all cut up on little pieces of paper. All 50 names. And they're in my Umbatalia bag. I'm gonna pick another one. Here we go. Let's do this. Patron Knits. So I got cut off there from my lovely computer. But yes, I had drew the name Patron Knits. Yay! So you lovely ladies, you've won the Colorfield shawl pattern and either myself or Kemper will be reaching out to you with that or sending it to you. So congrats. The last thing I wanted to talk about in Woolies today was the Canada Cal 2016. So far, there are two weeks left, okay? So far, there are almost 200 entries on my site. I'm sure there's lots of other entries on the other bloggers or other podcasters, uh, Ravelry pages, but I have about 200 and I couldn't be more thrilled. There are some great prizes being offered and I really hope that many of you were able to take advantage of the discount promo codes and whatnot that the generous designers and yarn yarnies have offered. I I think there's definitely some that are that still have codes available. I know that Isis Fiber Arts just uh, messaged me a couple weeks ago with uh, a discount code all of those discount codes can be found in the, the discount promo code thread on the group on Ravelry. And I also have a thread for the prizes. So make sure that if you're entering a project, it meets some of the, some of the criteria for winning a prize. And in your entry, in the entry thread, I need you to make sure that you have it listed. So either Canadian Yarn, Canadian designer, Canadian theme, or of course, you know, double up, triple up. And the theme gives you a lot of leeway, all right? So even if it's not a Canadian pattern or not a Canadian yarn, let's say you knit it on a cross Canada road trip or while you were visiting your Canadian family and, and it holds great memories for you. Those things do count, but I do need you to explain why, why it, why it should be considered Another, uh, okay, so let me say it. If you go back and check your entry and it doesn't have that listed, you can edit your post and you can just click like edited to clarify why this qualifies. Edited to clarify why it qualifies, yes. And secondly, I want you to remember that in order to be eligible to win a prize, you do need to be a member of the Wool Gathering group. So that's easy, as easy as clicking join group and you'll be all set to go. That's everything I have to share with you today. I, I hope to have some really cool footage from Common Ground Fair next week uh, to share on the next episode, number 18. And I want to say thank you all for watching, for your patience and for your participation in the Cal, if that's something you're doing. It's uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon now. I'm going to clean up all my podcasting clutter and have some lunch and do some cleaning and just enjoy the sunshine. Thanks. Happy knitting. It's just a dream. It's just a dream But it's just a dream Until you see it happening And then it changes everything Couldn't we make, couldn't we 
make? Couldn't we make it? Just like we want it, just like we need it. Why can't we? Just like her. Who says we can't? Who says we can't? Who says we shouldn't? Who says we could?